Hi YouTube and welcome to my channel. My name is Patrick. If you're watching this video because your computer's been compromised, my sincere condolences. That's a very violating feeling and I'm so sorry that you're going through that. If you're here to learn what to do in the event of a hack proactively, well, welcome right aboard. This is the video for you. So let's go ahead and dig right in. Alright, so first you need to be able to recognize that you've been hacked. Uh, this can show itself in a variety of ways. Uh, you might notice unusual behavior, like slow performance, and that might mean that something's using your computer's resources behind the scenes that you can't see. Also, if you see programs opening or closing unexpectedly, or your mouse moving by itself on the screen, or something being typed in that you weren't typing, uh, that's another sign that something is amiss and you should probably consider that you're hacked. Another thing to look out for is unauthorized access. If you notice programs on your computer that you didn't install, uh, that should be a major red flag and you should stop and consider if maybe you've been compromised. Uh, network activity is another one. If you notice a lot of network activity while you're not using your computer, well, you know, some network activity is normal, but if it's a high volume, like a lot of bandwidth being used up, then yeah, there's a pretty good chance that you've been compromised. Also, if you get security alerts from your antivirus, obviously that's a pretty clear indication that there's some kind of malware on your device and that you need to take action. So speaking of taking action, so this is what you need to do if your computer is hacked. The first thing you should do is tell your IT department. Now, this only applies to business computers or school computers, but if you're using a computer that your work provided for you, then the first people who you need to call are your IT department. Now, while you're calling your IT department, you should disconnect the computer from the internet. At this point, you're trying to prevent any more damage from being done. And what that means is that you should disconnect it from the internet, so that the attacker can't continue doing whatever attack they're doing. And then, of course, by disconnecting it from the internet, what you're trying to do is to isolate the computer. So if you have anything connected, like via Bluetooth, you also want to disconnect that. Basically, just make sure the computer can't talk to anything else on your network or beyond, uh, because again, you're trying to isolate the damage, reduce the damage that's caused. And of course, if you're if you think your computer's been hacked, don't log into any accounts on it. Uh, you know, if you do that, then there's a good chance that the attacker, the person who hacked you, might be recording everything that you type. And again, look, I know how violating of a feeling that is. And again, if, if you're here because this is happening to you, I'm so sorry. Definitely, if you have questions about any of this, if you need help, leave me a comment down below. I'd be more than happy to give you some personal advice and help get you safe again. So, and another thing you want to do immediately is to document all of the suspicious activity. Write down exactly what's happening, how long it's been happening, the symptoms that you're experiencing of a potential hack, and just have a general ledger where you record all of the relevant information. All right, so you've isolated the computer, you've prevented any further damage from being done, uh, what's next? Well, you should probably tell the relevant parties. So reach out to your friends, to your colleagues. Tell them, hey, my computer's been hacked. Look out for suspicious messages from my accounts. It might not be me. Also, you should tell your bank. Uh, pick up the phone, call your bank. If it's after hours, call their fraud prevention line. And just get in contact with your bank. Tell them, hey, my computer's been compromised, I don't think that it's safe, and I want to make sure that nothing sketchy happens with my money. So yeah, call your friends, call your bank, call your co-workers, call your contacts. I know it's embarrassing, right? I understand that this is an embarrassing situation, but keep in mind, this happens to everybody eventually. Every person, if they use a computer for long enough, it's going to end up getting hacked. 
I mean, it's just a fact of life. So please, don't feel so embarrassed that you don't tell your friends, colleagues, and your bank, because you could prevent them from suffering the very same events that you're going through right now. It's the kind and compassionate thing to do. Alright, so now that you've told everybody that needs to be told and you've isolated the computer, the next thing to do is to assess the damage. So check your bank statements, check your credit reports, check your credit cards, look for any financial activity that seems suspicious. Keep in mind, people aren't going to just hack you for fun. It, you might see, you might have seen that back in the early 2000s and the 90s where people were getting hacked just for fun, but these days the attackers are after money, and so you need to, first thing, make sure your money is safe. If you see anything suspicious, then get with your bank, follow exactly what they tell you to do, and again, I'm sorry you're in this situation. And then on your computer, check and see what programs are installed specifically any remote access programs. So you're looking for AnyDesk, Screen Connect, Log Me In, anything that would allow somebody to connect to your computer and control it remotely. Uh, that's definitely something that you want to write down in your ledger that I mentioned earlier, and just keep a record of it. And if possible, go into the application and look at how recently it was used. In Log Me In, for example, there's a menu that you can go into that'll tell you every connection that's been made to the computer. If you can figure out when exactly somebody had access to your computer, how long and what time, then that can help you assess the damage. Alright, so let's talk about removing the threats. So what you want to do is boot into safe mode. Uh, there's a way to do this in Windows, just Google how to boot into safe mode. The reason for that is that safe mode loads with the minimum amount of software needed to get to a functional desktop. That means that all of the background processes, all of the third-party software, none of that's going to be running in safe mode by default. And so safe mode is, is safe. And, and once you're in safe mode, get a USB drive, plug it in, and copy over all of your important files. Uh, now you should have backups. If you don't have backups, then subscribe to the channel because I've got a video coming out later that's going to give you a detailed step-by-step -step guide on how to get backups going, and I highly encourage you to watch that. But if you don't have backups, get a thumb drive, copy your important files over. Now, bear in mind, this thumb drive with your files, well, those files might be infected. So what you need to do is run an antivirus scan while you're in safe mode. So what you can do is download like malware bytes, put malware bytes on there, run a scan with it, and make sure it's also scanning your thumb drive. And as long as there's nothing on your thumb drive that it flags, you should be okay to remove that, set it to the side, stick it in a drawer. We're going to need it later. Okay, and you're going to need a second thumb drive. So you need one thumb drive to store your files. Now you need a second thumb drive because you're going to use that to wipe the computer. Uh, so what you need to do is go to another computer, a different computer, and use that to create a Windows installation USB drive. The steps to do this are very simple. All you have to do is Google download Windows 11, download Windows 10, and Microsoft's website will pop up. Don't click on an ad. Don't click on an ad. Make sure it's Microsoft's real website. But basically, you're going to click that. It's going to download a tool that will create the USB for you. And then you're going to plug in the USB to the computer, reboot it, hit the button to boot into the USB. It's different for like every computer. Sometimes it's F1, F2, F10, F12, delete. But anyway, just look up what button it is for your computer, and then boot into the thumb drive, follow the steps on the screen, delete everything on your computer's drive, and then let it reinstall Windows. Now, when you do this, you're going to lose all the programs you had installed. You're going to lose all of the data that was in those programs and on your disk. And I get it, that kind of sucks, but... The thing is, when a computer is hacked, 
you have no way of telling how bad the damage is, realistically. Unless you are a forensics, a computer forensics person, you're never going to know the extent of the damage on that specific computer. Because of that, what you should really be doing is starting over from scratch because you can't trust it. You can't trust any aspect of it anymore. It's been compromised and there's no point in trying to manually fix the damage because you're going to miss something and then guess what? Everything you just did was for no reason because you missed it. So yeah, you're going to have to wipe the whole thing, reinstall Windows. Yes, I know it sucks. I know it's complicated, but this is just what we need to do at this point. All right, so you've got your important files on one USB drive. It's in your drawer. You've got a second USB drive with Windows. Throw it away. Now your computer has Windows on it again, a fresh install of Windows. So go ahead and first things first, connect it to the internet and run updates. Make sure you're running updates on it. And then reinstall all of your software, all your programs that you need. You should be able to download them online. Just reinstall them. So something important to do, change the passwords on all of your online accounts. You want to use unique, strong passwords. Use a password manager, please. Don't try to remember a dozen unique, long passwords. Your brain is not made for that. The human brain is not good at that. So what you need to do is change all of your online account passwords. And again, I know this is a pain in the butt, but you should consider that the attacker could get into any accounts that you had accessed from your computer. So at this point, yes, you need to go through and change the passwords on all of those. Also, if you haven't already, make sure every online account has two-factor authentication. That's a critical security step these days. If you don't have two-factor authentication already, now is the time to set it up. And then, spend some time securing the computer. I'm not going to go into details on how to do that in this video, but I'll leave a link to another video I made in the description that walks you through everything you need to do to secure your computer. Right, so now you're back up and running, you've copied your files back over from the thumb drive, you've reinstalled your programs, your computer's safe again. So here's what you need to do going forward. Keep your antivirus up to date. That's the number one thing. Number two is practicing safe habits. So you want to use an ad blocker. Using an ad blocker on your computer is a great way of avoiding scams and malicious content. And then also, do not give websites permission to do things on your computer. If you get a pop-up saying, hey, random website 123 needs access to your camera, don't give it access to your camera. <laughs> but really, if the, if the website doesn't need access to something in order to function, don't give it to it. And also, if you get a pop-up on your screen saying that you need to call this number because you have a virus, that's a scam. You're never going to get a pop-up from your antivirus that tells you to call a number. That's just not a thing that happens. So if you see a pop-up that says, call this number because you have virus, that's a scam. Someone's trying to hack you. You haven't been hacked yet. Someone's trying to trick you. And then don't just install any old software. Seriously, keep in mind when you put a piece of software on your computer, when you download a program, it's on your computer along with all of your personal information. So do not introduce something to your computer that's not trustworthy. Only install software from trustworthy developers and make sure that the source that you're getting the software from is the legitimate source. And also, for now, keep a close eye on your financial accounts. Again, the attackers do this because they want your money and they want your information. So going forward, at least for the next couple months, keep a close eye on your bank accounts, keep a close eye on your credit, keep a close eye on your credit cards because that's usually the end game. And also, keep a close eye on your online accounts in general. You may run into a situation where an attacker tries to break into them using the information that they stole from your computer. 
and when this happens, you don't want to be caught off guard, so keep a close eye on the security activity of your online accounts. Now, legal considerations. I'm not a lawyer. I'm not your IT department. I'm offering all this information as is. I make no guarantees, but you need to have considerations about legality if this is a business computer. If it's a business computer, you might be obligated to report the attack to your cybersecurity insurance, or you might be required to report it to a governmental body. Uh, you're the one. You're the one in the business, so you're the one who should know what to, who to report it to. Uh, but you know, if 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 this is a business computer, then call your IT department first thing. But whatever you do, do not mess up the computer. Do not do anything with it. Just disconnect it from the internet, isolate it, and wait for instructions from your IT department. Or if you are the IT department, hi. Uh, well, you need to talk to your cybersecurity insurance because you might be required to preserve the evidence. And that means not doing anything that wipes the evidence off the computer. With all that said, if you followed my instructions, you'll be back up and running with a safe machine. If you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing to see more videos like this. And I hope that you enjoyed. I hope that if you're here because something bad happened, I hope your day improves. I'm so sorry you're going through this. Again, it's a violating feeling, but really don't feel ashamed. Because this can happen to anybody. This happens to everybody. It's just a part of online life. But if you follow my instructions, you'll be back up and running, you'll be safe, and you'll be ready to get back to work. Anyway, my name is Patrick. I'll catch you in the next one.